Let's talk about money. Let's talk about it. We're in a cost of living crisis in the UK and many countries around the world are either in or on the brink of recession. So one of the most popular questions we've had at the Diary of a CEO in the last three to six months is about money, people's concern about their own money, spending, finance and saving. If I'm someone out there now that has, I don't know, a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds worth of disposable income every month, or if I have a thousand or 10,000 pounds, what should I be thinking about as it relates to creating more money and making myself financially free? The first thing is you just want to earn more. Um, people massively settle for how much they could earn. Um, so the first place to, I think, to invest is in yourself. But here's the first principle. The first principle is uh, income follows assets. Income follows assets means that the more assets you have, the more income you'll earn. If I own, if I want rental income first, I need a house. If I want dividend income, I need shares. Um, if I want to be paid as a brand ambassador first, I need a brand. So essentially, the more we can accumulate assets, the more easy and effortless the money flows. So um, we have to figure out, well, what assets could you accumulate and what assets could you formalize and own? I wrote a book called 24 Assets, and I listed out all the different digital assets that are new economy assets that people could have, things like brand and positioning, things like databases, things like company culture is an asset now. So uh, I talk about how do you formalize those things? If someone's just starting out and they've got 100 um, a month, to be, to be perfectly honest, trying to invest 100 a month or any of that, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change your life. But if you put that into your own skills and your own development, um, let's say you don't have negotiation skills. Well, there are courses that you can take for $100 that give you negotiation skills. Let's say you don't know how to close sales. You can take a, a course on how to make sales. Let's say you don't feel confident public speaking. You could do a public speaking co course. Um, so there are things that allow you to gain your skills. The other thing too is money is relationships. So if you don't have a lot of money, you typically don't have a lot of relationships. Um, you might have a limited number of relationships or a limited number of relationships with people who have a flow of money. When you have a high degree of relationships with people who've got money flowing, it's very effortless for that to flow to and from you as well. So you might have to invest in relationships. Um, when I arrived in the UK, I knew that uh, one of the places that I would meet interesting people would be private banks. So I didn't qualify for private bank, but I went into a private bank and I said, I'm going to be launching a business and of course it's going to be great and successful. I want to bank with a private bank. Um, can I, do you have an entrepreneur's program? Oh yeah, we did. And they start selling me, joining the entrepreneur's program. Now it cost me 600 pounds to open an account with that private bank but they immediately invited me to dinners and they invited me to networkings and all these sorts of things in the private bank. One of the things that I've recommended a lot of people do is host dining uh, dinner parties uh, and reach out to people who you don't know. Uh, here's, a, here's a silly story. I was just in Dubai and I know someone who has a 100-foot yacht. So I said, Jeremy, can I borrow your yacht for the evening? Um, I'm going to be putting 15 really influential people for a dinner party uh, we're going to have burgers on the boat. And he, and he said, oh, great, can I come? And I said, of course you can come, it's your boat, right? <laughs> and he, so he said, great, that'll be exciting. So he basically said, you can, you can host this party on, on my 100-foot boat. So I reached out to all the people who I didn't know and I said, hey, we're putting together burgers on the boat. Would you like to come along and have some burgers with interesting people? And then they came along and I made the investment into relationship. Um, now, the funny thing is, is a lot of people say, oh, but you know someone with a 100-foot yacht. Funny thing is, I, I think plenty of people who have a boat, especially in Dubai, it sits empty most of the time. You could reach out to 30 people and say, we're going to do it on someone's boat. Would you like it to be your boat with or without your energy? So making investments into relationships is a really powerful thing for $100 a month. Personally, what would I do with $100 a month? Take people out to dinner. That would be my number one investment. I'd, I'd probably be taking people out to dinner. Why? the investment into the relationship. So I would be inviting the most interesting people I could possibly invite. Uh, if I had the ability for $100 a month, I guess that's one dinner. So I would reach out to someone interesting and say, I've seen your story. I've seen what you're interested in. Can I take you out for lunch? Can I take you out for dinner? Oh, it's my shout. I'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Obviously, don't do that with someone who's famous. You get 100 of those a day. I get plenty of those a day. Reach out to someone who's not famous but who's accomplished, who's successful, who's, who's a mentor-esque type person, not necessarily a superstar, but someone who's a few steps ahead. 
take those people out to lunch, take them out to dinner. Would you say in that message that, you know, you talk about calls, I talk about emails, what, what would someone have to say to you, considering where you are in your life now with all the inquiries you get, for you to actually go for a coffee with them? Um, so... Bear in mind, everyone's going to email you and say this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it happened today, actually. Someone said, um, Daniel, I noticed in the background of one of your photos that you have an amazing Fender Stratocaster. I teach people how to play guitar. Um, I would love the opportunity to do a guitar lesson with you and help you to shred on that guitar. And it was really nice. He had watched my podcasts in the past. He had noticed the guitar. He reached out with something that was valuable for me. And he said, I'd love to have a chat with you and teach you how to play some guitar. And I'll, obviously I'll have a chat with him while we do that. But that was a really, it was, it was a very sense, uh, it was very, it, it felt uh, like a, a good connection. I also had a look at his um, profile and he looked like a really lovely person, with, you know, who's, who's getting on with doing stuff. There's a bit of with or without your energy as well in terms of, you know, I can see this person's up to stuff. Right, so I look at that and I go, he did some research on you. Mm -hmm. he offered you value in an area where you were potentially seeking or yeah. looking for the value. Yep. Oh, that's definitely true if you've seen me play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's like the core component. And I, I feel the same way that I, I, I try and figure out why sometimes I reply to these cold outreach messages, but 99.9% .9 of the time I don't. Mm -hmm. But it tends to be the case that the person will say, they'll show that they've done some kind of research on me, which is good for your ego. Like everyone has an ego. You want to feel like someone actually cares. And then they'll offer me something in return. For by, the, by the way, do you know I did this to you? Did I don't really? even know if you remember. You and I were both speakers at a conference. Right. And we were in the elevator and I'd prepared for you a really nice leather um, briefcase and it had your, uh, I created the Happy Sexy Millionaire thing. And we, we gave all the speakers one of those. You weren't that mm. special. We had, we had okay. some for oh, all the fuck. speakers. But anyway, it was interesting because I, I actually have done that with you and we never ended up following up with you and you never followed up with us. But here's, the, here's the thing. Really I want to share that. No, I want to share that because sometimes it doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you have to send out, like when I sent out 3,000 cold DMs to launch a business, I didn't expect 3,000 people to respond. I mm -hmm. expected 30 or 40 people to come back to me. When I gave, gave that to you, do you remember it? I remember getting a briefcase and I'm trying to, I do, I do quite a lot of public speaking these days. So, um, well, I we only had like a five, like a two minute interaction. And right. I said, Hey, this is a little gift for you inside. We've created something for you. Have a look. Um, was it something I had to scan? Was probably. There some, was there something scannable in there? Yeah. We'd, we'd built you a little landing page campaign. Yes. I remember. Yeah. And I remember getting in the car and saying to my team, oh, this is cool. Yeah. And yeah. then of course it gets passed to the team and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. We'll put that on the pile of cool things. Um, so the point is, is I'm saying that to say these things, you don't want to get hung up on the idea that one person's like in that same event, we gave that same thing to another really well-known person. They've gone with it and they're like, mm. um, you know, millions of followers and they're one of our clients now. So we have with or without you energy, which is when, when my team do this, we pick 30 or 40 people who'd make amazing connections and contacts in our uh, VIP outreach team. And then we reach out to them and we expect maybe two or three of them to get back to us. So it's that idea of, you know, don't, like if someone messages you and you don't message back, it's not the end of the world. There are other people you can message and there's a, and look what happens. And there you go. It comes around again. It always it, comes around again. If it's, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. So what about people, you know, so many members of my team speak to me and ask me about investing. They might have tens of thousands to invest or whatever, but I'm curious about your personal investment thesis with a, with a capital that you have spare. What do you do with it to create more money? So what does your portfolio look like? It's extremely boring. I just stick any available capital into S&P 500. What's uh, the S&P 500 for anyone that doesn't yeah, know? Yeah, the top 500 stocks in the US. So essentially any government that inflates its currency anywhere in the world, that money will hit the economy. And it will eventually make its way back to the top 500 companies in the US through spending, or that capital will end up being put into the S&P 500, which inflates it. So one way or another, it's going back to the top 500 companies in the US. So it's almost impossible to beat the S&P 500. I hate investing. It's not my thing. I like expansive business creation. I'm an optimist. Uh, great investors are often pessimists. They're very good at thinking what could go wrong and the, uh, analyzing risk. I hate that shit. 
So for me personally, I want to, as much as possible, expand the portfolio of businesses that I think should exist in the world. And I've always made my money by just saying I romantically like the idea of this business existing and I'm going to pour my energy into it and it's going to become worth millions. Rather than thinking about where I want to invest money, I want to create something that's investable for other people to put money into because that's how you really make money. So the exciting thing is not placing my own chips. The exciting thing is creating something where others want to place chips into that. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.